Another day, another minute, talking in the studio with Alex. How is it going, Alex? The big Jared. week. Jared, it's good. Very good. Thank you for asking. You're a little uh, short today. Your mic specifically. Hi, guys. I'm here, too. I did this last week, too. I did you not remember? No, I don't. I don't, I don't really pay attention to you that way but oh, this I, for some reason i just hurt my feelings a little bit i know i'm sorry i'm really sorry you are tuning in to the cigar guys podcast where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe meet your host alexander gonzalez mark nikolai his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So, sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. Okay, welcome back to another episode of The Cigar Guys. I am your host, Alexander Gonzalez. Joining me is Jared S. Burroughs and Zachary no middle name Nikolai. Which camera do I look at? All right. Tell me when I'm looking at the right this one. This one. That one? Yeah. Sick. <laughs> the Cigar Guys one. All right. We're here smoking um, the Quesada Oktoberfest. Specifically, thanks to Zach, we're smoking the Weston Tobacco Special Edition 2024. 2024. Tell us about your trip, buddy. So, I am back from the... Tornado capital of the world. I don't know if that's true. You could fact check me. Um, but I visited a small town called Weston in Missouri and they were having a cigar festival. Um, and I stumbled upon these. They release them every year. Uh, I think they said that this is actually going to be the last year that they're releasing hmm. this one. Um, Meaning the festival edition? Yeah, they're not going to be releasing any more festival editions. And I think they're not going to be releasing any more Oktoberfest as well. Really? Yeah, so I had to buy these. Uh, I had to bring it over here. They had some cool stuff. Uh, Big Ash Cigars was there. Um, Drew Estate was there. Uh, You know, some other guys. So, did you leave early knowing that this festival was going to be there? Or did you just happen to? That was on my mind, too. I happened... uh, My coworker actually was like hey let's go check it out they have a cigar shop and i'm like okay so we leave we go to the cigar shop uh and i'm like what's going on upstairs they're like oh it's a cigar festival they're like you could either buy tickets or you could stay on the left and you don't have to buy a ticket which is where all the uh uh product people were all the reps so we just checked out the reps talked to them for a little bit um and then i bought some sticks and that's it I brought them back for you guys. Um, I was kind of shocked. The uh, well, it kind of makes sense. They had a good the cigar shop over there had a very good selection of cigars, and they were all you know reasonably par- uh, priced. So, if you bought a ticket, is that just like you get some free stuff? Maybe you get to like actually do some stuff. Yeah, I mean, you get a seat at a table. Uh, they probably catered food. Oh, okay. I didn't look too much into it. Um, you only had one job, and that was to conduct business exactly exactly so i'm gonna call him out here hopefully uh devin from big ash cigars could uh come on one of the next upcoming podcasts uh he was rolling cigars over there super cool dude um what do you yeah. think so far well out of the first initial light it's very flavorful yeah but it's Oh my gosh! What are you doing? That was <laughs> we're on episode ninety four, and you're doing this now. <laughs> that was an alarm to actually wake up to show up here. <laughs> Sorry, um, uh, that was unintentional. It's very but, flavorful, <clears throat> yeah, and it's it's a unique flavor. I don't really know right now what I'm getting. It actually caught me off guard because uh, it's actually pretty dark. I thought it was gonna be much much bolder. But at first, free puffs was actually lighter. 
and the flavor is really intense. It got more intense. Too. I think it's got some spice. The draw is really good. Yeah. Really, yeah. really good. But there's like a unique flavor I can't put my finger on quite yet. Is this your second time smoking this, Zach? No, I, I saved uh, my first time to be with you guys. <laughs> God. <laughs> he honestly just knows how to see all the right things. <laughs> to be fair, though, that was an unopened package. So It was. Yeah, but we don't know how many he smoked before. Ah, uh, he could have smoked Singles. a whole package yeah. before we got this one. No, this it's it's good so far, but yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, no, definitely I, spice. Over there, I smoked. Uh, I was just religiously smoking the Besa. Then I smoked. Uh, shoot, what cigar was it that I sent you guys that I got as a gift? Did you? I don't remember. Oh my gosh, this one doesn't have autofocus. Sorry, it's not your fault. That's what it is, right there. I don't remember. You sent us a... Uh, um, I don't know. Anyway, shout out to one of our viewers, Chris. He's the one that gave it to me. So I smoked that over there. It was a nice chilly day. Went outside on the patio at the hotel, smoked it. Oh, you said you had a um, a knuckle sandwich, maybe? No. No. Uh -oh. What was it? Did I'm going to remember. Did you send us a picture of it? No, I didn't. But I, I, I literally, as soon as soon as we get off this podcast, I'm gonna remember. Um, but yeah, anyway, I was smoking that, and he actually had a uh, Hawaiian cigar. Well, oh, like, um, was it in a glass tube or no? It was a wooden box. Okay. Yeah, so he had a Hawaiian cigar there, but he's not smoking it yet. Um, we're actually gonna be in Hawaii at the same time, so oh. you know, I'm gonna buy one, and then you know, we'll see how it is. Because I have that one Hawaiian cigar. It's in the glass tube. That's like I don't know how old, but I think it's a flavored cigar. So I think it's just gonna stay decoration. Gotcha. That's good. I'm glad you had a good time. Um, we also have uh, a gift that we're gonna be using. I have already used it once, um, and it is actually mouthwash designed for tobacco and marijuana smokers so we're going to focus on the tobacco part but this is smoke sniper mouthwash and this is actually uh this company was started by i believe a sophomore at dayton university up in ohio so right now as far as i know he's got these one ounce uh mouthwash uh things that he's starting with i'm sure he's going to make some larger sizes but it's all natural with, um, I believe, lemon and mint are the flavors that it has. Nice. Um, I used this a couple of days ago after smoking a cigar. And I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this. Like, completely gone. I mean, no aftertaste of any tobacco that I had before. Are oh, you just switched around? See, you're what, good to go? I don't know what you smoked, but we need to find the worst cigar yeah. that leaves the worst amount of flavor in your mouth. For sure. And then test this out. I did a have Camacho um, triple Maduro. Maybe because I did Ooh. have that aftertaste. It smells good, right? It smells like a Four Seasons. It smells really good. I, I did have tobacco aftertaste. So I was like, this is the perfect time to use it. Gotcha. I used it and I switched around. It's, it's like Listerine. The thing with Listerine is I feel like when I use Listerine, it almost feels like it's masking the odor yeah obviously it's killing germs whatever but i feel like it doesn't quite get rid of the taste 100 oh yeah but but it, it what, what? Like brand new hotel yeah like, yeah, yeah no legit <laughs> yeah, it, I think it legit first uh, first impression reminded me of the four seasons <sighs> but yeah i used it and i thought i was tripping for a second but i couldn't taste any tobacco couldn't smell it did the breath check <sighs> can't smell it but i mean to be honest with you, these you know <laughs> How, how do I call it? It's not big pharma, big, big mouthwash. You know, <laughs> these big these, mouthwash, <laughs> big dental. Um, I mean, their mouthwashes like they do the same for you as like a shot of whiskey would do. Like it just yeah. has alcohol in it, and yeah. it uses that to kill off any bacteria. And it quote unquote tastes good. Yeah, because they just flavor it with mint or you know, uh, spare mint or whatever the case may be. I'm curious too if like lemon and mint the the flavors that he picked 
or the oils that he picked are designed more to get rid of this like sm- after smoke taste yeah, yeah. maybe i don't know or maybe that's just the flavors he happened to pick but whatever he i mean it's got the ingredients on here too like hydrogen peroxide um oh it's not on here there's a qr code though so i looked it up it's got like you know hydrogen peroxide a couple other things and lemon and mint essential oils for the flavor and obviously you're not swallowing it so it's not bad but it's pretty good i'm you know you guys can try it after i like it a lot i am definitely going to be trying it tonight i would definitely check these guys out so or this guy out again he's a sophomore in college so it's kind of cool smoke sniper i believe it's smoke sniper.com i'll put the link uh here and in the beginning and the end but um check him out I think he's working on bigger sizes too. Cause I mean, obviously this is like two swigs right here. Um, but it comes in a pack of nine. So it's definitely plenty. And I'm sure you'll make some bigger bottles too. So I really like it. I'm sure you guys are going to like it too. And it's definitely good to keep in your car or something in case you need it for an emergency. I was going to say that's what, that, that's what I would do. I would like maybe keep a pack in my car. Yeah. Uh, this way. I mean, you know, how many times have we been out smoking? We're like, we have to go to. You know, a nice spot. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, we all have cigar breath. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's really good. Definitely check them out. Um, but yeah, so this might actually be a good cigar to test it out on. So far, I'm getting quite a bit of this tastes really good. It tastes great. This Don't tastes really wrong. good. And I mean, uh, was it pack of 10? Um, yeah, 100 bucks. Okay, almost so, $10. $10 yeah. a stick, yeah. I mean, they, they gave me two free sticks. Oh, okay, nice. Also, so. Mm. And, so and where just, are those? <laughs> <laughs> Gone. He didn't mean to let that slip out. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh. 40 and slip. He did not mean to slip that, let that slip. But yeah, it's really good. It's very, it's not full body in the sense of strength, but it's definitely full flavor. flavor. Yeah, definitely full flavor. Well, you can't say that yet until you smoke it, you know, 90% of the way and you're like, uh. I guess it is true. I'm getting a lot of spice. Try to figure it out. It smells really nice to me. I will say this is making like my mouth like salivate a lot. That's the spice. Yeah, but I'm not really tasting the spice. Really? Maybe. My nose is like on fire right It's now. a little bit of heat, yeah. Uh, well, I've been retro handling. And I kind of don't feel good right now, so that's probably it. Oh, you my know. gosh. So, you Here should retroinhale to feel better. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what screws me up is like, we live in Florida, right? So, our humidity is like 100%. When we walk down the street, you know, we're swimming basically. Yeah. Um, going up there where humidity is like zero, it always screws with me. Especially, you know, I was, I was only there for a week. So, do you not like it or is it just so different that? Your body like freaks out. A little bit of both. Um, I don't like how dry it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That that I definitely don't like. Cause then, you know, I feel like I need to buy like moisturizer and just like smother my body because my mm. skin gets so dry. Or like a thousand bottles of baby oil. I, I knew that joke was coming. <laughs> I don't know. I don't mind it, but I can see what you mean about feeling dry, like in your face or. Well, normally I don't mind. So it depends. If it's just dry out, I don't like it. If it's like snowy dry, like mm. I don't mind it because you're still getting moisture from that snow. That's true. Um, like anytime I went up to like Utah or, you know, uh, Colorado, like I was fine, but it was snowing the whole time. Over there, it's straight up just, you know, dust storm dry. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, because even when I was in Oklahoma, I feel like that's not even as dry as Kansas. Actually, we did go to Kansas, though. We went to Arkansas, Kansas, or as they call it, Arkansas, Kansas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, you lost me on that one. It's a real place. I believe it. That, actually, now that I think about it, that was really dry, but no tornadoes. I, I haven't seen it. I haven't witnessed a tornado yet. Me neither. Yeah, me neither. But Florida tornadoes are like, you know, a stick. I have seen dust devils before. Uh, I mean, yeah, I yeah. have. I have too, yeah. Like when you're driving and you look in your back in the back of your... Is that what you're talking about? 
Eh, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like a mini like tornado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like you could just hold it and cuddle it. You know what I mean? Have you walked through one? No, I, I'm not. I don't want to interfere with it. I want to let it just uh, no, keep I, going. I walked through one because I want to see what it would do, and it just like dissipated. <laughs> like it's not moving your furniture, or throwing your chairs up in the air. Yeah. You ever seen like those vape clouds where they like blow it on the table and then they just like yeah. That's that's how it looks. Oh. Yeah. So nothing major. No, no. Nope. So what? Who else? Um, if you remember, was at the Weston Tobacco Festival. You mentioned obviously uh, Caseta is there. Caseta, Big Ash, uh, cigars. Not the podcast. Um, then Jewish State was like their biggest one that was there. Uh, I sent a video to you guys. Oh, and then that um, the people who donate the cigars uh, to the military um, every year. What's that? Uh, Operation. You know what I'm talking about? I do. I can picture the logo and everything. I yeah, yeah. Name. So, so they had a rep there, and I think there was one other one, but I, I really don't. I don't remember stopping by. Um, uh. Let me ask you it this. It wasn't La how, how many? It was only like five. Oh, okay, I mean, it's okay. a small town. Like, yeah. like, legit, this town is one intersection. So, most of these brands probably are near there. And then, obviously, Drew stays there because Drew State goes everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And I thought it was hilarious because, you know, they have all this swag, right? So, they're like, oh, if you buy this, you could get this. You could get this backpack. You get this cutter. And I'm like, I looked up the guy. I'm like... I forgot his name now, but I'm like, is it, uh, sorry, remember, Operation Cigars for Warriors? Yeah, that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I looked at him like, you know how much Drew steak gear I have in my house? He's like, you can never have too many. I'm like, you know, that's a good response, but I think I have too much. <laughs> I think, unfortunately, Drew Estate is really heading towards the, um, the, like they're really pushing the swag and they're really making like a point about it like when they do events and stuff yeah where it's not so much focused on the product it's more like you know you can get an ashtray or a lighter or a hat or whatever i feel like they're just pushing it a lot more agonorsa leaf oh okay yeah they were there so there you go. i was like looking at our signs i'm like which one was it <laughs> <laughs> so cassetta general cigar so, you know, CAO, Cohiba, Macanudo, Espinosa, Badash, Ashton, Drew Estate. Oh, did you look it up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Re- rename that list. That's who, that's who I was there. I was wrong. All right, renaming the list. Casada, General Cigar. So we have CAO, uh, Cohiba, Macanudo, Espinosa, Badash, um, Ashton, and Drew Estate. Ashton. So not Agonorsa? Not Agonorsa. Okay. Ashen. Yeah, sorry. That free beer there. I was going to say, though, Agonorsa Leaf has been growing quite yeah, a yeah. bit, growing a lot more. So it wouldn't have surprised me if they were out there. But I know, too, talking to them, I think they're mainly focused still on, like, the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. Did you did you do the uh, club membership thing? No, no, I didn't buy anything. I, I went there for lunch, and <laughs> we just stopped by to look at it. It's actually not bad. For $50, you get a... We get a ticket with free cigars, a t-shirt, free beer, and a free lunch. Oh, that's pretty good. For $50? That's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. So you could have just gotten your lunch there. I could have. Totally could have. (laughs) But we went to this this pizza place. It's pretty good. It wasn't New York style pizza, but yeah. You know what this (laughs) tastes like, actually? One of the flavor notes, I think it's... It might be cardamine, which is that debate that we had a while back because people were saying when they tried the base of Maduro, there's that certain spice that they couldn't put their, like they couldn't describe. I think that's what it is, but this is a lot stronger compared to, to the yeah. base. It's pretty good though. I like, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying it to be honest with you. Yeah. I, I wasn't spe- expecting to enjoy this cigar. I w- no, not as much as I am right now. Yeah. It's almost like I want to compare it in a way to the red meat lover where it's it's very savory. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say that. 
It's not, it's not like a dessert. It feels like meaty, if that makes sense. Just very savory. Yeah. It's, almost, it's almost strange because when you when you blow out, there's a second flavor I get, and then your your tongue gets all moist again, and then it kind of like you salivate a little bit. And it kind of changes it. Mm. I never got my drink. I'm gonna pair some rye with this, Jared. You wanna hook me up? Uh, the tall one. I couldn't read it because it's behind. Tenth Mountain Rye Whiskey. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I only got one hand. For the viewers that don't know, I actually only have one hand, and then I have a nub on my right hand. Good my cigar, arm. by the way. Actually, I will say I had um, the nub Connecticut uh, about a month or two ago, and I was genuinely shocked at how good it was. Because they have like I've had like the Nub Cafe like way back in the day. I don't even want to say this, but I feel like we've been smoking a lot more lighter cigars, like Connecticut's more often. We have been smoking a lot of Connecticut's. A lot lately. Yeah. Which the Connecticut's we've been smoking, um I won't complain about. No. But I do miss my full bodied scares. Oh, uh our viewer Chris, he I gave him a Besa to try. He smoked in the morning before work. He said he loved it. No bono. Like, yeah, he, yeah, but he he likes smoking Maduros. So I'm like, I'm like, if you like that, just wait till you try Maduro. Oh, you didn't have any with you? No, I didn't. I thought I thought I brought some, but I think I smoked them all on the last trip. That's okay. He can order them. He can order them. Does he work with you in Orlando? No. Oh, okay. So yeah, he can order them. But yeah. That's good. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, he's he's the video of you guys chopping down trees popped up, you know, and I came into work and he's just like he's like, Oh, I saw them chopping trees to get up to North Carolina. I'm like, I told you. Like I I, I had just told that story. Yeah, that was very interesting. I had a couple of people come up to me, they're like, What is that video you posted? I'm like, Yeah. And they were like, Where was it? I'm like, South Carolina on our way to North Carolina. We didn't make it. Technically, we did make it to North Carolina, but not where we wanted to go. Hey, Charlotte, good town. Did you guys go out at all over there? No. No, so we found a hotel late at night, went to sleep, and then we went, got breakfast, and then hung out Nice during the day. So, I mean, it, but it, very clean city. It is. It's and it's not, it doesn't feel like everything's on top of each other. There's a lot, it's very spaced out, mm -hmm. and... The city itself isn't huge, but it's surrounded by a lot of homes. It's still like a very residential area. It is. And I think that's what shocked me the most about it was it didn't like it felt like a city, but it didn't feel like like a New York City or like a downtown Orlando. So it reminded me of Denver, but not as big. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. But everything was so well kept. I mean, their public transit is like it's pretty top tier. And, you know, I never ride public transit. Um, and I, I was just shocked because they have their buses, but then they have, uh, I, I forgot what they call it, like a speedway or something. And it's basically just a train that goes back yeah. and forth, um, along like the West side of it. Hmm. But it, it was so easy to get around. I mean, when I was there, I was like, I'm like, Oh, you know, I'm texting everyone. Where, where are you guys at? And they're like, oh, I'm at this bar. I'm like, all right, cool. So I get on the public transit. And as soon as I get off the train, the bar's right there, you know? <laughs> so it's like, everything's right near there. Useful. Yeah. They had a really nice, uh, the name escapes me right now, but if you go to our last vlog, um, we missed the wedding. It's in there. Uh, but it's a nice private cigar lounge. They charge you, uh, $10 like to get in if you just want to go for the day. I think their membership's like, hundred bucks a month and then it goes up from there to their premium memberships but that was a very nice little spot there um full bar big humidor um and a nice outdoor area that was the only shop we managed we, that was the only shop we had time to go to i mean that whole weekend was just a mess yeah i drove for like 20 hours total mark drove for four but i like to drive and on our way back home, we tried to stop at a hotel in Savannah and they could not honor a reservation. So I told Mark, you can drive the rest of the four hours back home. I can't believe that happened. I like know. in Savannah, it's not like they were like hit. You know, they had internet. They, no, they didn't have power. 
They didn't have power? They didn't have power. That was the whole reason. So he said our power just came back up like a couple hours ago. So they were flooded with reservations. Yeah, yeah. But they were already booked. Yeah. Dang. That's crazy. Yeah. The whole East Coast was booked. So, I mean, down at least down to Jacksonville, all the hotels were booked. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what you saw driving back, but when we drove back on Sunday, all we saw was like linemen driving up north, you know, just in in rows of like 20. Well, when we stopped at the hotel in Savannah, um, there was a guy getting a room that they had reserved for an electric company. And he said that they were going they were traveling from North Carolina south all the way to Florida. And we were like, why are you going down to Florida? Like, don't you guys need it more? They definitely did. Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina needed the help way more than we did. Mm-hmm. Um, for Helene specifically, which for is what Helene, we're talking about. Yeah. I had to find it, but uh, it looks like it's called the Vintage. Yes. Okay. Yes, I think that's it. Is there a picture of it? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Got that's video it. Up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so the Vintage Cigar Lounge, they were just, I think they've been around for a few years and then they just got new owners. So, but it was a cool spot. They have a nice private lounge too. It kind of felt like um, the London House, if you've seen our content at the London House, but um, a little more open. Well, not open, but more natural light, if that makes sense. They had a lot of windows. Um, Nice big spot. Um. But yeah, they're really cool. So if you're if you're in the if you're near Charlotte, check out that place. There's quite a few cigar lounges there too. We just didn't have time to go. Charlotte was kind of funny because at the end of the night, when you know public transit was closed, I was Ubering everywhere, and uh, a normal Uber was more expensive than Uber Black. Hmm. So I was Uber Blacking everywhere. You know, and some guys in suits would come pick me up, like some Escalade or Suburban or something. It's kind of weird. I wonder if it was just because everyone was trying to get a regular Uber. I, that yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it was just over. It was just flooded with uh, standard reservations. Because if if you're dri- if you drive Uber Black, you could pick up regular Ubers. Yeah. Um, if you really want to. Yeah, because I've noticed sometimes if I get an Uber, just regular Uber, sometimes you'll get like a really nice car pull up, and yeah, the guys in the suits and stuff like that. Have you all ever experienced um, Uber surge prices? At all? Yeah, I have. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, because uh, one time I flew, when I flew back into Orlando, this is the one time I didn't park at the airport. Uh, I had to Uber back home, and this is at like two, three o'clock in the morning. You know, like my flight got super delayed, and everyone's trying to get home from the bar or Halloween Horror Nights or Disney or whatever. Uh, and I got hit with the surge price, but. And it was it was so annoying because I got my ride canceled like, you know, 10 times. Like it took such a long time to get a ride. Yeah, that's always late at night, especially if you're near bars or like Orlando yeah. makes sense. But yeah, it, it's always like midnight to 2 a.m. for sure. Yeah. Sometimes a little earlier. It just depends on the area. Well, and they don't want to drive, you know, from Orlando to Lake Mary, you know. Yeah, Zach and I had to Uber from the Orlando airport to like Mary once. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't $100. know. No, 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 no. no it was, I, th- I want to say it was like forty bucks. That's or what something. I was gonna say. Um, and that was to drop him off and then drop me off. Yeah, after. it was like those rideshare ones where you could put two destinations. Well, one time he called me while I was at the airport, uh, and you're like, "I can come pick you up." I already paid the. Dude. <laughs> it was like a hundred something dollars to come home. Oh yeah, yeah. But it was like one, two a.m. in the morning or something like that. So. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and to be honest with you, man, like recently I, I've I've rode in Ubers late at night like that, you know, just leaving Universal, and it's it's like not worth it. Not, like not even with the price, just the drivers are always so tired that it's like I don't feel safe them driving me home yeah i didn't feel safe with that one lady that drove us home from the airport yeah dude and i had a worse one recently literally right before i went to uh uh to kansas you know we uber to halloween horror nights and like this dude was falling asleep on i4 oh, yeah, and like so then i just tried talking to him you know to try to keep him up whatever and he just did not want to talk and i'm like are you okay he's like 
He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I've, just, I've just been driving all day. You, know? like, like, you guys are so damn boring, you know. <laughs> I just want to sleep, man. Can I take a nap? I'm I'm the I'm the uh, dedicated shotgun passenger for Ubers, so you're the dad. Yeah. So how long have you been driving for Uber? <laughs> Zach is like the most loved and most hated passenger. They hate that they love me. That's what it is. <laughs> Women are like that too. They hate that they love me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We had, a, we had a busy week, actually. I've had a busy like month and a half. And I think I think I'm not gonna wood that this is the last busy busy part of this year. I guess besides holiday, besides busy. holiday stuff, I'm, I don't I don't mind holiday busy. Me neither. No. There's 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 a <laughs> holiday busy. I don't mind, and I love it. Like I love rushing around, getting ready for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, whatever. Um, and then hurricane busy. I love, I thrive during hurricanes. Yeah. Especially being in Florida. Cause no one, well, half of us don't care. And then the other half is like freaking out. Uh, yeah. And I, and I love the like two, one or two days before where like no one's on the road cause they've got everything and they're scared to go outside. And then like the day of the hurricane, the day after no one's on the road. It's awesome. It's peaceful. Yeah. It was like COVID. Yeah, it's. Just, I don't know. I was I was telling someone I was talking to someone about hot, uh, hurricane parties, and then they're like, "Is that a real thing down there?" I'm like, "Oh yeah." I'm like, I went to Publix, and I went to go get uh um a case of beer for a skit for the podcast that Jared deleted, um and. And uh, and I go to get this case of beer, and there's this like like older lady that's like trying to get like a 24 pack of Yingling, and then like I'm like, do you need some help? She's like, oh, do you mind? I'm like, no, I don't mind at all. So I'm like grabbing these cases of beer for her. I'm like, yeah, you gotta get ready for this hurricane. She's like, oh yeah, we're having a little get together, like this and that. And I'm like, you know, and she she was probably like, you know, 70, 80 years old. And I'm like, I love this. This is why I live in this city. Because, <laughs> too, I feel like, as always, at least recently, the storm's always been... The storm always comes late at night. Like, especially uh, Milton. It was basically all overnight. We had rain before and a little rain after, but the the actual storm itself just blew through overnight. I feel like that's how the last couple were. Yeah, like, I didn't lose power till 6.30 in the morning. Like, yeah. after the storm left us. I'm like... I'm like, seriously, guys, what are you doing? I feel like it's really depending on where you're at because if you're like Sarasota, Tampa, a hurricane party there might be a little different than a hurricane party in the center of Florida or the other side, you know, not in the path. Yeah, a hurricane party there is picking up beers on your way to Orlando. That's you probably know. the best way to look at it. Yeah. It made sense why they evacuated. Yeah. They got flooded. Yeah. Is uh Corona Cigars in Sarasota? They're not open yet, right? Still? I don't know. I think, I don't know. I know that they had, they got hit hard, but I don't know if they are still closed. It's been a couple weeks. They, yeah, okay. They, yeah, they might be open. It's but. funny though, because um, in Sanford, like Blend and Barrel specifically, it's weird because since they're on the lake, they get like delayed effects. So I know, I saw that. Yeah. Like it flooded, but it flooded days later. Yeah. Because the lake eventually fills up and overfills. Too. When we were there, the waves, there was waves coming in off mm -hmm. the lake. So the road actually didn't get flooded until like a week after. And it wasn't really flooded, but it was like the city felt the need to close the road after. Cause we went, we went on Wednesday and people were just driving through it. And then Thursday we went back and they closed the roads off. And it literally looked the same from the day before, but I think maybe people with smaller cars were trying to drive through and they might have had issues, but <laughs> I almost got in trouble uh leaving one of the neighborhoods over here after the hurricane because you know the front of their neighborhood it's a city 
the easement is a city road that goes into a gated community. And the city road is about, I don't know, a quarter mile long. And it always floods. If Lake Jess or uh, Lake Monroe floods, that's flooding because that's where it drains to. And uh, there was two police officers like if you're in the neighborhood and you're leaving where the flooded road is at, there was two police officers like stopping people from going through the water. And uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm paying attention over here, but I'm also listening. So th- I'm like, I'm in a truck and I'm like, I'm like, I'm going to drive through this. I know I can make it. I made it in here. Like, I know I can make it out. So I drive through it. Then the cop like moves the cars and are like staring at me. And I'm like, I'm like, you think you're going to stop me from leaving this neighborhood right now? <laughs> like, I got in. I'm in a truck. That's like entrapment. Maybe. Well, it is because they're waiting at the end. Mm. They're waiting for me to commit a crime that is not a crime. And then trap me at the end when I make it through. There's no road laws during a hurricane. Or like the day after. It's not like we're under a curfew or anything. Like, if they really want to be... Oh, Seminole County yeah. police. If this was Lake Mary, Lake Mary would have pulled out their boat and been shoveling people back and forth. <laughs> oh, yeah. My grandparents were like... They live in Volusia County. And they're like, oh, there's a curfew tonight. I'm like, really? You guys are in Volusia, too. Technically, you're even further than us. I don't think we ended up getting a curfew. Not that I saw. Yeah, because usually they send out like an emergency notice and we didn't get anything. It was funny for us. We had uh, early in the morning, we had a, we had an emergency alert come through our phone <laughs> and it said like evacuation warning. And that's basically all no, it no, said. No. It's a mandatory evacuation yeah. issued for Seminole County. That's what it said. That's, that's all it said. said. And then we got a follow up one like <laughs> five minutes after that. And it said like mandatory evacuation for um, people that were like disabled um, people that live in flood areas or, or like mobile, mobile homes. homes. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I looked it up after it was, they, they accidentally sent it out like the, the just mandatory warning. They sent that out on accident and it was supposed to be just for specific people. So I'm like, we got it. And, but you know, Bree's like, we just got a mandatory evacuation warning. And I'm like sitting there, I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, there's no way. Like, and the storm's already kind of passed, too. At this point, I'm like, there's just no way. Like, I'm not Alex, leaving. Alex is there like, I'm not fucking leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. Exactly. I'm like, we're fine. We're not in a flooded area. We're, like, we're relatively elevated. Um, I didn't see any issues with that. I, I was just going to say. But in reality, wouldn't you just, you know, go to the second floor? And if that didn't work out, you go to the third floor? If, if, if I know? had to go to the third floor... <laughs> That would be insane. Yeah, that'd be crazy. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be crazy. But I mean, I haven't heard much about damage afterwards in Florida. I think we're relatively okay. No, I don't think it was anything compared to the Carolinas and Georgia. Dude, bars closed at 5, 6 o'clock the night before, and they opened back up at 1 o'clock. Yeah, and that's just because they were after. understaffed. <laughs> yeah honestly though i mean it was one bartender you know like citrus city they were open yeah they were all like well i would stay but they're making us leave yeah and they probably just weren't busy too it was kind of weird because usually like they'll stay busy i think everyone just felt like staying inside or something i, I think people were grilling out they yeah. were cooking the hotel and- bars were busy though yeah hotel bars were busy. <laughs> but they were all from out of town <laughs> that was so funny we went to a hotel bar over here after our latest bar closed. This is like as the hurricane's like about to hit us. And uh, the, these ladies are like, where are you guys from? We're like, oh, we're from here. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, what? And we're like, yeah, no, we live here. We just, this is only bar open. <laughs> she started laughing. She's like, well, you know, I'd be doing the same thing, but I live in Sarasota. So we came here. I'm like, oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Good times. Always good times in Florida with a hurricane for the most part. But yeah, I haven't heard anything major like as far as people getting, you know, really bad damage. I know there's, yeah. I mean, in certain areas, they had the tornadoes that blew through and took off some of the roof and caused some damage to cars and stuff. That sucks. Which, which is wild, right? Because it's a tornado that spun off a hurricane. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
even in Sarasota, like, I mean, they got hit bad. Um, the storm surge wasn't as large as they thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, and even flooding around here, you know, the last hurricane that we got, and it wasn't even a direct hit. Remember, we had a lot of flooding and it didn't drain for like weeks. Yeah, like in Sanford and stuff. Yeah, but that was because, uh, um, what's that big lake that we have? Uh, oh, the St. John's River. Yeah. They have floodgates at the St. John's River that are supposed to open during storms that drains basically all of Florida. And they didn't open that time. Mm. So and we were stuck with floods or like a flood, like flooded roads um, for a while. Actually, yeah, even here on International, there was a lot of flooding. Yeah. Not bad, but like. But you, it went down in a day. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. I mean, like if you didn't have a truck, it was like kind of risky. Yeah. But it was, I, that was a year or two ago, I think. I remember I drove down that road and had my windows rolled down because it was nice out. And I realized that like the whole road is flooded. I'm like, one, I should probably slow down. And two, I feel like I should roll my windows up. And I flew through that road and just like shot water everywhere. This other guy in a truck pulled up next to me. He's like, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I I thought for sure you were going to slow down, but. It's like, yeah, it, it was the thought came in my mind, but it just it never got executed. <laughs> good times. This is a really good cigar. Alex got a preview of the power loss, too. Dude, that was insane. <laughs> Bef- the storm might have hit Florida like the coat. Actually, it probably didn't even hit. Florida, no, just yeah. the bands were hitting. Yeah. Yeah. And I got, and we lo- lose power at like f- five or six. I'm like, are you kidding me? I took a nap, woke up a couple hours later, the power came back on. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And then we lost power overnight, like 4 a.m. And I was like, okay, now it kind of makes sense because the storm is actually here. Yeah. That must have been a fluke. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the, uh, what? I mean, I offered to come over and charge your, you know, your phone and the things for you. Jared was really looking for something to do. He's like, how are you charging your phones right now? I'm like, <laughs> Jared's like, I have a Because truck you said now. you're in your car. You said you're in a truck. Yeah, I could just go into my truck. I didn't need to because my phone was charged plenty, but I could go in my truck, turn it on and charge my stuff if I needed to. So you don't have to get that Tesla control panel for, uh, to, to use your truck as a generator. Like you could just get a regular generator plug. It's just more convenient to have the Tesla one because it consistently charge your, charges your car. And then if the power goes out, it automatically switches. Mm. Yeah. But I did some more research on that. I think that's badass. Well, they gave me the money for it. So I might as well just do it. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 I would do it. Yeah. And then Ford, uh, Ford has a generator function. Not only on their lightning, but they added it to their gasoline and diesel trucks. Hmm. So, if you have a diesel and you have the generator one, like, you're golden. Because diesel's idle, like, super efficiently. So, so what is the whole purpose of it? Uh, you could, if you lose power, you could turn on your car and, you know, uh, power your house with really? it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. That'd be helpful because I can't even run a coffee machine off of my truck. Once again, I offered to come over here. It's okay. I made uh, coffee the traditional way. Made some Turkish coffee on the grill. It didn't heat up too much, but then it still tasted really good. Yeah, it takes such a long time to boil water on a grill. (laughs) I found that out um, in North Carolina when everyone wanted coffee. And I'm like, I'm like, guys, just crack open a beer. Like, (laughs) I was better off. Grabbing some like wood that had fallen from the trees, putting it together and lighting it on fire, then using the grill. <laughs> Probably. How many uh, coffees did you make? Uh, I essentially made enough. I made two cups, essentially. Had one left, had one later. And then I practiced a little bit back when, when the power came off. I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm like 80% of the way there. Nice. I got a few things to figure out. 
But I got some tips from Zach because he makes some good Turkish coffee. It's improved. They used to be pretty bad. But I used to make it a lot at the restaurant. Um, I I have to make it on a gas stove, though. Yeah. Like, I, I and it's just because yeah. I'm used to it, you know. Well, I feel like the electric stoves, too, they take forever. So, I have a problem cooking with on electric stoves because um, they... They take forever to heat up the pan, I feel like. Yes. But then once it heats up, it's like too hot. Yes. Exactly. And I'm like, you know, there's like no control for it. Yeah. And I'm like constantly, uh, constantly battling with like trying to cool down the pan and then trying to heat it back up quick with, with, I feel like with fire, it's like, you know, just a lot easier. <laughs> the way God intended it. Well, next time, I mean, I have gas in my house, so. Do you have gas in your house? Yeah. Oh, nice. I got gas in my and house. And propane. Too. I wish I did. I miss having gas house. You have propane at your house? I think I do, yeah. Okay. We I restocked all my propane. Thank God. The one time, you know why they were empty? Because my parents have been like burning like trees and stuff. We've been clearing out a lot of our land and they've just been burning everything. And they bought this like, you know, the roofers' torches. Why don't they just use your uh Elon Musk flamethrower? Yeah. They yeah. They could have. Same concept. Mm. Glorified roofing torch. It, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it's funny, though, because you could tell. If you take the roofing torch and you take the the gun, you could see it's the same thing. Like, from the button placement to, like, the nozzle, everything. And then they just put in, like, a Nerf toy. Yeah. We used that to light a cigar one time. Someone has a video somewhere. I'm pretty sure we've used a barrel of an AR to light a cigar. That too. You also have like your mini rocket too. Oh yeah. I haven't seen that thing in a long time. <sighs> Should have left it here. It would have been safer. Yeah. Well, I keep it in the box. I don't want it to like get mm. ruined. So is it not stainless steel? It is. It is actually. Oh, we're good. We are good. We should wrap that too, actually. <laughs> Just in case. It's funny though. Now that I see like the uh, Tesla Cybertruck. Without a wrap, I'm like, mm. I don't know. It just looks weird. Yeah, they just dropped the 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 standard pricing for it. Yeah, Jared's trying to get me to buy one. Jared's just been sending me articles on how the hottest used car is a Tesla. <laughs> Zach's like, I know. There's one article. I know. <clears throat> He's like, I know. I'm the manual. But I drove an S5, man, and that thing was sweet. I think it's sweet. He's like one of the one of the guys up there. I was like, you know, we're I guess we're Audi brothers, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I have an A6. He's like, oh, I used to have an A7, and I'm like, well, what do you have now? He's like, an S5, and I'm like, you drop back down to that? He's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, and he's like, I won't turn back. He's like, it, there's plenty of room. It's quicker, you know. It just feels more like a sports car with you know with four seats. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know if I want to do S6, S7, A8, you know, I'm like naming all the cars. He's like, well, come on, let's go test drive mine. I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. So we took his car out, test drove it. And that thing was, that thing was sweet. Sounded nice. I think back in the day, actually, when my dad was car shopping, we went and looked at an S5. They're, it's really nice. Yeah, they're, they're badass. I mean, and I was shocked. Because I was worried about the room because I'm a big guy. So, I sat in it and he had the sports seats in there. And I just like, it felt like it was hugging me. Like, it just felt fantastic. It's almost as if like, it's meant to be yours, right? It's almost like what? It was meant to be yours. Like, it, Yeah, I know. That's, that's the way you. I felt. I told him, like, I'm pissed at you right now. He's like, why? And I'm like, because you let me drive this car. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you gave me a taste of it. So what were you saying the other day? The odd numbers have the hatchback or the five door or something like that? Yeah. So like the odd numbers are hatchbacks and then or like they're sportier models. And then the even numbers are uh, are just regular sedans. So like the A4 is a, is a small sedan. A6 is a midsize. And then A8 is like a full size luxury, you know. Um, so you need like the S8? Yeah, yeah, and then they have the RS8. Oh my god! 
which is like supercharged, just like, okay, like the Q8, right? The Q8 is, you know, the full size. Well, it's, it's a little different for the, the SUVs, but the Q8 is like their, um, sportier full size SUV. Like it doesn't have a third row. Um, and if you get the S Q8, then it's like a twin turbo and have single turbo. But if you get the, uh, the RS Q8, it's the same thing as a Lamborghini Urus. Hmm. I mean, it's made by the same company. It, it, same engine is in there. Same brakes. You could get the carbon ceramic brakes. Um, I think there's a 50 horsepower difference. So really all I have to do is just change the logo and no one's going to know. <laughs> I mean, they might know, but basically <laughs> you could get a tune for it and then you could have the same tune that's in the Urus or you could get a tune for it and have more power that's in exactly. the Urus, you know. But the RSQ8 for it to be a daily driver is like a little much. Yeah. Because like the carbon ceramic brakes need to be hot for it to work well, right? I mean, they work well regardless, but if you're driving it like city driving... Like, mm. they're never going to get hot enough, and they're always going to squeak because that's just what they do. Like, they're made to be, like, used. <laughs> it's okay. We live in Florida, so just let the sun do its work. It's true. I would say the scar is definitely not full strength, though. Then you said to wait it out, but it's definitely like medium strength. Yeah, yeah, medium strength, full flavor. Do you still taste the spices at all? I do taste the spices. Yeah, I start, I start to taste it. I still get it on the retro hail quite a bit. I, I, I start tasting on my lips, and now I'm like tasting on my tongue too. Mm. It's very good. I'm curious to try some of their regular edition ones too. Yeah, I'm glad I stopped by um, the cigar festival. I got lucky. I mean, it's not like you're going to have a bad time at a cigar festival. I agree. I agree. I think well, it's funny because, like, the hotel I'm staying at, they have a nice patio that overlooks the water. And um, I always go out there and smoke. And you know, it's like my third time at this hotel. And so everyone knows me over there and I've never had an issue with it. And my coworker comes out, he's like, you're allowed to smoke out here. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I've always, uh, this is where I've always smoked. And then he's like, he's like, oh, okay. And then I look, I look behind me and on the door, there's like two big, no smoking signs. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, well, they never said anything about it. And then I asked about it. He's like, he's like, no, nah, you're good. You like sit in the corner, you know, he's like, no one really cares. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, if you're outside, and if you're not right by the door, I feel like it makes sense. Yeah, because the door is like on the opposite side of where I was sitting, mm. and I always try to do that. Just anyway. Um, I mean, if you're about twenty feet away, you should be fine. It's yeah. not blowing inside the establishment. And and yeah, that's probably what it was about. But I mean, a lot of times it's like don't walk right outside and light up a cigarette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like go to the corner, yeah. you know. Yeah, because one of the hotels I went at in Jersey, it was bit like no smoking signs everywhere, but all the flight attendants that were flying in or driving in there were, were going like right, pretty much like twenty feet from the door and smoking, and no one, no one cares. I will say though, since we talked about blend and barrel a little earlier, we are having a base of cigar cut and light there on November twenty ninth. So if you're in the area near Sanford, come out and see us there. That whole week too, we're going to be running a raffle. So that's going to be base a week, basically Thanksgiving week. So Black Friday, yeah, we're going to be there at Blend and Barrel, smoking base of cigars, pairing with Angel's Envy bourbon, neat or old fashioned. I prefer neat though because that bourbon is so good. So that's going to be a fun time couple other things that are coming up. Holiday season is always busy. So we'll keep you posted on that. But that's our next big event coming up. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. 
Fully Sorry. stocked. Fully stocked on all the basis cigars. Not for long. Not if I get a hold of them. Nope. I think uh, they're going to be pushing them quite a bit there. That's going to be... Uh, it's going to be... November is base a month. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> nice. But yeah. Blend and Barrel too. They have a... One, we have to go to the one. They have a new one in Cocoa Beach now. There's a couple of spots out there actually, but... I'm going to check that out for sure. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Jared said that uh, it's hard to have a bad time at a cigar event, but there was one in particular where VIP apparently was great to be at, but the rest of the festival was uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> slow, I will say. Yeah, VIP looked like they're having a blast. Yeah. But from my recall, it was like, if you got a ticket, you might as well have gone to VIP. I think the problem is it was kind of designed that way. Yeah. Where it was like, you know, you get a VIP, you get your cigars, you get your liquor. They have the music over there. But it kind of screwed everyone else. If you just got a regular ticket. Yeah. Because you have to pay to get in still. But then they had a VIP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still a good time, though. Yeah. I'm glad we went. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what we got. We're going to show up to more cigar festivals. The problem with, the, I mean, there, there's so many, it's hard to keep track of all of them. Yeah, and it's hard to narrow down the good ones. Yeah. Especially in Florida. I mean, every other week, I feel like there's one. Yeah. If only there's a website for this. I just, man, that'd be awesome. It's like if there was a website called the cigar events.com that had all of the events on there. That'd be cool. It would be cool. It would be cool too. If like it was made so where users can submit events on there. So that way you could have events nationwide. It's true. That would be nice. Yeah. We'll look into that. Don't steal that domain. (laughs) <laughs> could you been for it could have been yours could have oh, been oh, yours I forgot about that oh might be soon who knows oh look at that that's pretty cool and it has a perfect draw in there yeah that's I, I put that on my keychain because because of the perfect draw for sure yeah Pretty uh, pretty neat, and everything tucks away real nice. It screws in nice. I'm not a big aluminum guy, but it's a nice aluminum housing. What is that brand called? It should be on there somewhere. Karemp. I don't know. It's a Chinese brand, so yeah, Karemp. But those are on Amazon. I think um, you get two for like ten bucks, maybe a little less than that. But I got a black one. I left the gold one for us to use. But all right, I think we'll probably wrap it up by now. You got anything else? Any uh, any closures? I know Jared never likes giving closure, but now nah, just walk out. Big Irish goodbye guy. Definitely check out Smoke Sniper. Their mouthwash definitely works very well and it tastes great it's very minty got some lemon in there so check out smoke sniper mouthwash give this guy a shot again young kid in college started a business so definitely uh supporting him and i hope you guys support him as well this stuff actually does work so if you like uh those full body cigars with a lot of uh aftertaste you got to go to like a wedding right after or something this is definitely uh the move for you But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.